Hello, folks. Yes, we are here again for another time to worship God. I trust your week was a wonderful one. I hope many of you got involved and were successful. Maybe just one person was successful in your scavenger hunt that ended uh, yesterday. Again, thanks to uh, Tiffany and, Char and uh, Carrie for arranging that and for all who participated in that. Uh, we're looking forward to this week. Uh, we have our Christmas Eve service on Christmas Eve at 7 in the same format. You, you can join us online for a Christmas Eve service. And then next Sunday, the 27th, the last Sunday of this year, we'll be having our communion service also. So you can be preparing for that. I will ask you to keep praying uh, or to begin your prayers for our nominating committee as we set times to meet and so we can be used by God to nominate uh, officers to serve our congregation for this uh, coming year. This morning we're here receiving the light from God and the Henry and Shari will lead us in a time of worship. Let us come, present ourselves to receive from God what he deserves and open up ourselves to receive from him what he has brought us here to receive, right where we are. Bow with me in prayer. Father, we thank you this day for your goodness. And especially at this season, as we think about the God, the com your coming into this world, may we embrace that with all the God that we can embrace it. And may our lives reflect the true message to the world. Those in our acquaintances who do really do not know, do not know you as you would like them to know you, their Father. May our reflection of your light in this season be used by you to draw them to you, dear God, I pray. Accept our worship as we lift our voices now in praise unto you. We pray and give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship God. Good morning, everyone. It is December 20th. Welcome here virtually to worship with us here at the Verden Alliance Church. And there's only five days left to Christmas. So just remember, Amazon will not get it to you on time. Normally during the church service here, I would be looking up to the upper balconies and I'd be encouraging people to stand, to welcome each other, giving each other a high five, fist pump sort of things. But in your own home, please get off the couch, uh, get away from the coffee table at the, at the dining room table and stand and worship with us here today. Here I am to worship. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. King of all days, oh so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth you created, all for love's sake became poor. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. And I'll never know how much it cost to see my sin upon that cross. I'll never know how much it cost to see my sin upon that cross. Worship, bow down, say that you're my God. 
God. You're all together lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. So, folks, as part of our worship, let us come before God, rejoicing that we can be part of his plan in giving to him as he has blessed us so he can use that for the furtherance of his gospel. Let's give God thanks for the offerings we bring to him. Father, we thank you for the blessings you have given to us, that we can now bring back a portion to you, dear Father. We know it all belongs to you, but as you have encourage us as you've opened us to come to be part to be partners with you in this ministry accept these gifts we would have brought touch them and use them only as you could use them dear father for the advancement of your kingdom here and around the world we thank you in jesus name we pray amen Say. The light of the world is Jesus. The whole world was lost in the darkness of sin. The light of the world is Jesus. Like sunshine at noonday, his glory shone in. The light of the world is Jesus. No darkness will we who in Jesus abide. The light of the world is Jesus. We walk in the light when we follow our guide. The light of the world is Jesus. Come to the light is shining for thee. Sweetly the light has dawned upon me. Once I was blind, but now I can see. The light of the world is Jesus. 
Yet dwellers in darkness with sin-blinded eyes, the light of the world is Jesus. Go wash at his biting and light will arise. The light of the world is Jesus. No need of the sunlight in heaven, we're told. The light of the world is Jesus. The Lamb is the light in the city of gold. The light of the world is Jesus. Come to the light is shining for thee. Sweetly the light has dawned upon me. Once I was blind, but now I can see. The light of the world is Jesus. Yes, another look at the Word of God, Christmas lights. What in the world, you probably want to ask the same question with me, what in the world is God doing this Christmas? What in the world did he do the first Christmas? Has he changed his plans and his purpose? Yes, folks, uh, today we are going to take a second look at the Christmas light. The light for changes. What changes would you like to take place in your life this Christmas? And not because of COVID-19. Remember, I asked you that question last uh, Lord's Day. In talking about changes, <laughs> one woman was conversing with her friend and uh, she said, I hope that I do not get visited again this year by the jolly bearded fellow with a big bag over his shoulder. You mean Santa? Asked her friend. No, she said. My son coming home from college with his dirty laundry. Our second look at the Christmas light will lead us to look at the light for conversion. Now I know that at first, that word conversion may conjure up some trepidation or some uneasiness. I, I believe that most of us do not like to think about the difficult task of altering our lives or making changes. Uh, we like things to remain as they, are, as they are. Do you share that belief? We find it easy to embrace change or conversion if we are the ones initiating the change or changes. We do not often like to be told that we need to make changes. You know, one of the beautiful things about this light that we're talking about is what it does that it reveals it reveals the changes we need to make so as to prevent us from stumbling and hurting ourselves because of the deception, the confusion, the mistakes, the misperception that is created by darkness. The word of the fella who every time he comes home from work after dark and his wife is already in bed. He will never turn on the lights, but he will just take his clothes off at the door and then plunge into bed. One day his wife decided to rearrange the furniture in the room without telling him. That night he came home and did as usual, thinking he was plunging into bed. You got it. He plunged and set into the nightstand. If only he had turned on the lights, he would have avoided a bruised forehead and the utterance of some off-colored words. So this is Christmas. Changes or conversion God wants for you. That is Christmas. To understand, appreciate, and accept the wonderful changes God wants his light to produce in our lives this Christmas. Let us take a look at a few choice scriptures. I have arranged them in an order to kind of give a summary of the story. These scriptures we find in John chapter 1 verse 1 to verse 5 and then later on verse 4 to verse 19, Galatians 4 verses 4 and 5 and then Matthew 1 verse 18 to verse 21. Arranged in a little different order. We start with John. In the beginning was the word 
And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. But when the set time had fully come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother, Mary, was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. And because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. In him was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world. And though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus. Jesus, the light of the world. Folks, he came not to be cuddled by us, but to convert us. As we look at his desire to convert us, let us talk about his pre-existence as found in John 1, 1 to 3. What does this term bring to mind? Why would someone want to come to this world to be part of this place of struggles and challenges, misfortunes, pains, tragedies, and all the unexpected situations in life? Some of the things you may be going through. All of these questions we may ask of Jesus. Why did he choose to come into this world? In his pre-existent state, he was shielded from these. But he chose to become part of this. It must be because of his overwhelming desire to share this experience with us. Must be because of that. Because he was uncontaminated by the corruption in this world, he could now, he could now be the only one to help us out of our struggles. And that's why he came. His amazing love is the reason for leaving his pre-existent state. Now, how, we, how may we today show appreciation for his actions on our behalf? Folks, this is Christmas. God leaving his pre-existent state to become as we are. To lift us so that we may become as he is. This is Christmas. Now let us talk about God's plan, as we would have read about it, Galatians 4, 4 to 5. Understand his plan. His plan speaks of patience, predetermination, and precious thoughts of us. When, when Paul talks about the fullness of time, get the picture here of things with which ships are filled, like the freight and merchandise and sailors, oarsmen and soldiers. With these, ships are made ready for their voyage, the fullness of time. So this speaks of the total readiness of the world's condition for God's advent. 
His coming into the world. Understand, His coming was not accidental. It was not untimely. It was not pre premature in any way. It came at the right time to bring about the changes God required of His creation. God was, and God still is, even today, the orchestrator of all things, whether they are historical or cultural, emotional, political, spiritual, the needs of mankind, God is in control. We may look back and see how, in a few ways, how God sets the stage for his coming. Think about it. Politically, when the Roman Empire was at its zenith, it, it, it had fulfilled the prophecy in Daniel. And out of that empire came the universal citizenship and a massive road system that aided in the gospel travelers. God set the stage linguistically. The Greek language became the universal language to aid in the proclamation of the gospel. Religiously, God set the stage. Through the dispersion of his people, the Jews, over the world, they were able to then sensitize the world to monotheism, the worship of one God. And spiritually, the stage was set because there, were, there was a period of 400 years drought, no word from God, until the angelic proclamation of his coming. Folks, the time was ripe for his coming. As it was then, wherever you are now, you are in the right place at the right time for his coming to you. Right where you are in your relationships, your finances, your fears, your job, your health situation, let his plan become active in your life. It is the right time. God has been where you are right now, waiting for you to become open to his plan for you. What is the purpose of the plan? I'm glad you ask. Here it is. His purpose, as we read about it in Matthew 1, 18 to 21, is why did he plan this Christmas night? Remember, the angel who spoke to Joseph clarified God's purpose for intervening in this way, intervening into the life of Mary and into Joseph's life. And we say, oh, what an intervention. Imagine the changes both of them were being called to make in their lives. And the purpose of these was to do what? Was to bring the light to dispel the darkness of sin. Joseph was told this, you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. The light to dispel to dispel darkness was not to bring about a bashing or a condemnation, but it was for the brilliance of God's salvation. It was like a rescuing from retribution, a liberation from bondage, a payment of an unsurmountable debt, a healing from the greatest illness, a deliverance from danger, a freedom from fears, an adoption from abandonment, an inheritance from poverty, an answer to the greatest questions we may have, and a peace, a peace in the midst of chaos and uncertainties. Is that where you are today? Do you possess that? This is the purpose of this Christmas light. For all of these to be received, God beckons each of us to his conversion. Let the light reveal in us the conversion or the changes which we need to make. And so we come now to our perception of this light. What is your perception? As we would have read about it in John 1 from verse 4 to verse 5 and then from verse 9 to verse 19. What is your takeaway from all of this? It is for each of us to follow our perception of him, or rather to allow our perception of him to be based upon his revelation of himself. 
he, remember, he pre-existed and created all of what we see. He revealed that his patient and planned intervention in our lives was at the most appropriate time. He clarified that his purpose is to save us from the perils of darkness by us embracing what his light reveals about himself, that he is the righteous one, spotless, and we are contaminated with sin. How do you perceive him? Now, perception speaks of awareness and experience. So now, allow your awareness of him to lead you to now experience him. What do we mean by this? Are you aware, Miriam from John's reading, are you aware that he is the light of all mankind? That includes you. His life generates this light that is needed to dispel all the darkness in our lives in our environment. Once this light is accepted, the Bible says darkness cannot overcome it. We have to be continually approaching and accepting this light. No time off. How would you experience this light of change? Are you aware also that the world did not recognize him? Now look around us today. It continues. The world continues to do so. Do not be included in that bunch anymore. What things obscure recognition of him? Today, it is easy not to recognize someone because of the mask they may be wearing. No, you are speaking with someone and you're just hoping that this is a person who you think it is. You know, I've been, over these past months, I've been in conversations with people from time to time. And as I'm talking with them, another person may come and they start talking to that person. When that person leaves, they'll turn to me and say, for the life of me, I do not know or I cannot tell who that person was. I hope that a person is so-and-so. I mean, just yesterday in the, in the parking lot of the supermarket, I was there and I heard one woman saying to the other woman, I could even recognize you with that mask on. Understand this. It ought not to be so with Jesus. He could be recognized easily. He wore no mask. How could it be? From what John says, how could it be that though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him? Now this defect in recognizing Jesus may partially may be partially through the deceptive distractions placed before us by the devil. Paul agreed with that. Paul in 2 Corinthians 4, 4, here's what he said. He said, the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. I call that devilish, deceptive distractions. Today, some of the things the devil uses are the theories of atheists to distract us. Atheists, those who disbelieve or those who lack belief in God. He uses the theories of agnostics, those who, those who believe that nothing can be known or is known about the existence of nature or God. He also may sometimes use the theories of evolutionists, those who believe that all of what we see here, kids, came into being on its own. There is no God. In addition, we sometimes allow him to use the threats of the unknown to blind us of who Jesus is. Question here. How would you throw off all devilish, deceptive distractions? Has he been using anything to blind, trying to blind your eyes? We do that by accepting God's revelation of himself. Awareness, another thing here. Are you aware that his own, those who were his own, did not receive him? John 12, 37 says, even after Jesus had performed so many signs in their presence, that's the Jews in his day, they still would not believe him. 
how would you be included in the bunch that ends that today, that ends that disbelief in him today? Think about the actions of some in John 12, verses 42 and 43. Here John says, Yet at the same time, many, even among the leaders, believed in him. But because of the Pharisees, they would not openly acknowledge their faith for fear they would not, they would be put out of the synagogue. For they acknowledge, rather, for they love human praise more than praise from God. I know. Maybe you've experienced this. It is tough. It is tough to adapt and to persist in godly beliefs and actions which you know may earn you the disfavor or the ridicule of many. But as you stand up to that, you have to ask yourself the question, how may I experience Jesus and all of his teachings in my life in the midst of threats? How may I do that? Or again, ask yourself, do I want for myself and others a rescuing from sin's retribution? A liberation from sin's bondage? A payment of unsurmountable debt? A healing from the greatest illness? A deliverance from danger? A freedom from fears? An adoption from abandonment? an inheritance from poverty, an answer to the greatest questions, and a peace in the midst of chaos and uncertainty? Do I want that for myself and others? Or do I want to embrace the devilish, deceptive distractions? Understand, the Christmas light is not to dazzle, but to deliver us. Lastly, are you aware that he gave the right to become children of God? How would you experience this childhood? To whom has he given this right? Well, John says, to all. To all who did receive him. To those who believed in his name. Are you one of those? If not, would you like to become one of those. I wonder, how were the apostles used by the Holy Spirit to lead others into this, into this childhood of God? To receive adoption to sonship, to save people from their sins. When they were convicted of their sins and they asked what they should do according to Acts 237, when the people heard this, Luke said, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? The inspired apostles then responded in verses 38 and 39 by saying, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, the promises for you and your children, and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. These are the words of Peter, inspired by God, speaking for the other apostles, to those who would become children of God. And these words are to you, if you were to become a child of God. Are there anything complicated in those words? What to do? To make that change for conversion, because you believe what you have heard, repent and be baptized. Conversion is then the forgiveness of sins and the gift, the wonderful gift of the Holy Spirit living in us. Now having done that, having become children of God, hear now and act upon the words of John that he wrote to the church in his first epistle. A few verses from John, I'll just read these to you. And see, as you hear what John says about children of God, would you say, I am that, or I want to be that, and claim that as yours. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 1, John said, My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. 
Later in that chapter, verse 12, John said, I'm writing to you, dear children, because your sins have been forgiven on account of his name. Live the forgiven life. Verse 20, John says, And now, dear children, continue in him, so that when he appears, we may be confident and unashamed before him. Let us continue in him in the ways he has shown us every day. Chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But when, but we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Chapter 3, verse 10. This is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. Anyone who does not do what is right is not God's child, nor is anyone who does not love their brother and sister, are you a child of God? Do what is right, loving our brothers and sisters. How can you show that in this time of chaos, uncertainty and crisis? Verse 18 of chapter 3, Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. As you have been doing that, continue to do that in this time. Reach out to others, not just in words, but in actions also. And then lastly, John 4, 1 John 4, 4. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Children of God. I read an article lately. A driver in Washington state was pulled over after police noticed the headlights of his car had been replaced by flashlights. <laughs> the state patrol officer pulled over the motorist after seeing the vehicle with super dim headlights. Officer Rick Johnson told CNN that flashlights were used to replace the headlights on the motorist vehicle. This is illegal in the state as it does not meet the, the lumen requirements, Johnson said. The car appears to have noticeable damage to the front and the headlights seem to have fallen or broken off. Now, in a different way, many have tried to replace the Christmas light of the Savior with their own lights. Are you doing that? I hope not. We started with the question, what in the world is God doing? this Christmas. I leave you with this question now, a more personal one. This Christmas, would you accept what God is doing for you? He has sent his light. Do not replace his light. His plan, remember, he has patiently waited and wants to work it right where you are for you. Would you accept it? His purpose for you to be changed, to save you from sins, past, present, future. Your perception now. Be aware and experience what it means to be his child. Romans 2.38, to become his child. Rather, Acts 2.38, to become his child. And from Romans all the way through to Revelation, how they're to live as his child. The light of Christmas for change. Would you accept those changes? Jesus, the hope of the nation at Christmas and every day of the year. Let's sing that as we now commit ourselves to receive the Christmas light the light for conversion.
Hope of the Nations, Christmas edition. Jesus, Hope of the Nations. Jesus, Hope of the Nations. Jesus, Comfort for all who mourn. You are the source of heaven's hope on earth. Jesus, light in the darkness, Jesus, truth in each circumstance. You are the source of heaven's light on earth. In Bethlehem, a lowly birth, the dawn of grace and peace on earth. You are the hope, hope brought to life, here to reveal what God's really like. Light of the world, shining for everyone to see. You are the Christ, Christmas is you. Our servant King, faithful and true, Jesus our joy, filling our hearts as we receive our Prince of Peace. Jesus, hope of the nations, Jesus, comfort for all who mourn. You are the source of heaven's hope on earth. Jesus, light in the darkness. Jesus, truth in each circumstance. You are the source of heaven's light on earth. In Bethlehem, a lowly birth, the dawn of grace and peace on earth. You are the hope, hope brought to life, here to reveal what God's really like. Light of the world, shining for everyone to see. You are the Christ, Christmas is you, our servant King, faithful and true. Jesus, our joy, filling our hearts as we receive our Prince of Peace, our Prince of Peace, our Prince of Peace. Amen. Yes, Jesus is the hope of the nation, the light of the world. Let us allow God to use us as we go this week and meet with those who are still to hear this message, that he can put the right words in our mouth and to show the light to them. As we pray in our closing, pray with me for our international workers and I trust you use, you use the global update I send out every week so we can pray for the workers whom we support with our offerings as we give to Global Advance. Let's pray for them at this time and for others. Father, we thank you that you, the God, are doing in this world the same thing you've done in the first Christmas. You're sending your light because you are the light of the world. We pray for those, a God, right now, our brothers and sisters who have left their homes and have been used by you, God, to share this light. Today we pray for Anne Louis as she's in Mexico. We pray with her for M, who has many tough life experiences, a God, this year. We pray that M will sense your presence and continue to seek after you. We pray you with Doug and Denise, Cameron and in Niger, in that country like ours, they're battling the challenges of COVID-19, their father. We pray for the leaders as they respond to the needs in that country. 
We pray for Doug and Denise as you continue to use them, dear Father, the believers with whom they interact, dear Father, that the believers will continue to be a witness of your light over darkness. We pray as a minister to the Toreg and the Fulani people, dear God, that many will come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. We pray with the Japanese, the Japan team for many opportunities that this Christmas season will provide for them to share the good news of Jesus. And God, we pray with Richard and Raya as they lead the new ventures called the Arabic Bible Ministries in Ottawa. We pray, God, for the many other churches and leaders as they continue to meet in this fashion, even though we can't meet physically together. May we continue to encourage and build up each other. And Father, we pray for those close at home, many who are unwell physically, like remember, let's say God, let's spin her, that you would touch him even now as he's uh, still in hospital. We place him in your hands, say God, as he placed Bertha also. Only as you know how to do it, dear Father, may you touch their bodies and strengthen them. We pray, Father, for the family of Kyle, Nash. We don't know them personally, dear God, but you know them at this time of their loss. Even as they're in pain, they can rejoice because they know where Kyle is, their father. And we pray you'll continue to surround that family with the support that they need, knowing that you're in control of everything. And Father, the many of whom we do not know, but you know their God, we lift them up to you right now, that they will continually, their God, open themselves to receive your plan, your purpose for their lives. The light that you have given this Christmas Use it to draw us closer to you. Go with us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you folks. Go forth reflecting the light of God in your life this week.